Yeah, hi there, it's Nick Nash, back on the camera again one more time. Hi there, how the heck's it going? Uh, another video about the rambles from the depths of my own mind. And uh, I do apologise if you can hear my washing machine going in the background, but if you take a day or two off because you think you've got uh, tonsillitis and you, you need to take a break, then you still got to try and find a way of fitting everything in. Life gets complex, you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, I've got an email, well, a private message request here on YouTube for a subject to cover, and that is the Law of Attraction. This one says, been thinking about it, I've come to really believe in the law of attraction, having observed things and experiences in my own life. I know how you must dislike the word believe, LOL, but my request is the law of attraction, and can this be explained through quantum mechanics? Well, this is where things get a bit complex. Firstly, yes, I would say that there is a strong overlap in terms of ideas between things which are spoken of in various schools of occult thought, such as ritual magic, chaos magic, and all the rest of it, uh, including focusing on the d desire, visualization, when in meditation, and trying to forget the original desire, and so on and so forth. It's, uh, it's very common themes which go on through an awful lot of New Age and occult writings. And there are some people, I have actually uh, know someone who once said that um, she needed to have a bit more money. She watched the, you know, the video of The Secret and uh, a short while afterwards she came into an extra couple of hundred so she, so she could pay off her bills and therefore she said it worked. Well I actually under those circumstances, that's not proof that it works. So that would actually be a much more of a corroboration to say that it doesn't work, or indeed that there is no direct evidence or any direct causal link between her watching the film of The Secret and the apparent results occurring. Although it is tempting for people to connect ideas they can't you know we just can't say for sure whether there is any direct causal link now doing something like watching the video of the secrets or doing your law of attraction meditation will probably do you no harm at all so i'm certainly not going to say that you've got to stop doing it but as far as believing that it is true and correct then basically, I don't think that the history of humanity has corroborated that. What about all those people who are like starving in the third world? I mean, some of them probably have got a very good spirituality, probably focus on very good positive things when they're doing their prayers and meditations, but yet, you know, they're still starving or they've got water problems and all the rest of that. So, you know, history does not corroborate the law of attraction. It is very much a luxury for us within the Western world that we've got the um, a society which is so both intensely neurotic um, as well as so luxurious by the standards of so many other nations that people can feel that when something good happens to them, it is due to the law of attraction and not due to the fact that we've got a good infrastructure. There's um, a wide variety of different opportunities and various different types of people who can provide, you know, really good opportunities for uh, for us. And and chance can happen, and it can be good or it can be bad. But essentially, if you were living in a different nation where there was like no infrastructure in the forms of uh, that the health service, the financial services industry, the, uh, you know, all the things that we take for granted, which basically help to keep our society going. And then the chances of your meditations and visualizations and watching the DVD of The Secret would basically not do anything. All right. Now, let me ask you a question. What is the difference between watching the DVD or the, the movie of The Secret uh, and thinking about getting a few extra pounds or dollars into your bank account and then hey presto something seems to happen at some point in the future and someone turning around to you and saying this stone is magical and if you put it in your pocket 
when you go to a casino, you're more likely to win. What's the difference? None whatsoever. Because in both cases, you're dealing with superstitious thinking. Whereby the individual invests so much faith in watching a DVD or putting a stone in their pocket that they lose sight of reason. All right. What precisely is the direct causal link which can be measured, quantified and qualified from putting a stone in your pocket and having a win on the casino? All right. If you were to take, let's say, a thousand identical stones, all right, and I mean identical stones being treated in identical ways, and you took a thousand members of the public, and you said, right, just for today, okay, here's 20 pounds, put this stone in your pocket, and go and play on, on those fruit machines, and then come back and tell us how much you've won and lost. And you have to do that with that thousand people, and, and the next day, you have to do it with another thousand people. You make sure that all the people who participate in it are perfectly stratified in terms of class, education, economic status, family status, mentality, um, attitudes, views, values, uh, where they stand on the California personality inventory and the Minnesota multiphasic personality inventory. All right. Uh, and you had a large enough sample size of, let's say, 10 million people, hypothetically, okay? Literally 10 million people who were doing it. You would then take the results of each and every single individual and how much they'd either won or they'd lost as a result of having the stone in their pocket, all right? Would you actually get an increase in the number of winnings as opposed to uh, what the casino statistics say would normally happen for a normal distribution of customers, namely people who don't have the magic stone in their pocket? The answer to that is probably no. Because so much is down to chance. And the reason that statistics is used in psychology and sociology is to work out uh, whether any similarities are down to chance. So this is why um, happenings in the outside physical world, you know, changes in your, in, in your life or in your career or, you know, you know, your family status or your financial status uh, is so difficult to ascribe directly to any form of occult cause. And people are more likely to, to do that if they themselves have something good happening in their life. All right? And that's why people might use the phrase, it works, because so much is down to chance, but they happen to be that, that the person who's got their, I don't know, magic rock, or um, maybe their lucky money talisman, or whatever it is in their pocket at the time. And humans are, generally speaking, quite superstitious creatures. All right, you've got to guard against the superstitious thinking because otherwise, you know, you're not being scientific. So is there, you know, some kind of like consciousness-based force which has the capacity to affect the physical world? We don't know. Even if there is a consciousness-based force which is somehow in the universe, um, that could be one thing, but then does that necessarily have the ability to affect things in the physical world? Again, we don't know. All right. Uh, and also, think about the quantity of money that it would take to do um, that casino s um, study which I just told you about. All right. Do you have that kind of money? No. Then you're not in the, you know, the ability, you don't have the ability to be able to set up a fully stratified sample based um, experiment for the purposes of ascertaining whether you have controlled the universe through using the law of attraction. You can believe whatever theology you want, and, I'm, and I encourage people to have a theology, but it can get dangerous when something promises great results, which the secret law of attraction does. Um, and doesn't actually deliver it. 
Now you may think, well, you know, I, I watched the DVD and I got that £200 or whatever it was, and therefore it works. No, you watch your DVD and you got your, your couple of hundred pound. But the causal link is, is unknown at best. And what's, what is the evidence to say that you were the one who actually made it happen rather than this happening by chance? All right, You haven't fully applied statistical science to this. So you can't ever, if you're going to regard yourself as being a rational, practical, down-to-earth, intelligent, scientific, educated individual, say that it is a fact. So, this is my views on the law of attraction. Okay. Uh, I think it is much less practical to think in terms of trying to change things in the outer world than it is to try and learn how to use meditation to help your body in some forms of self-healing. Um, and that's a question of learning rather than anything else. I mean, I can improve my circulation to a certain degree under some circumstances. But again, not 100% reliably. Uh, I can help my digestion and assist myself in uh, relieving some gut pain through some forms of meditation. Uh, I can reduce nausea in my body through some forms of meditation as well if I happen to have that kind of digestion problem. These are things which my personal experience suggests can happen. And there is sufficient science to back that up. Uh, for me to say that yes, this is part of the way in which we as humans um, can operate. But there isn't that kind of knowledge and science backing for trying to create changes in the outer world. We, we just don't have that. Okay. Um, apparent communication at a distance, yeah, I think there's a bit more... Uh, evidence to support that. Again, there's still many unknowns, lots of unknowns. As far as self-healing, that's that's a small part of it, but uh, there's no cures to diseases through this, th these methods. Okay, It's something which can help, it certainly is not a cure, and that's got to be remembered. Okay, So, can the law of attraction be explained through quantum mechanics or well, quantum physics and quantum mechanics because it's so woolly uh, could probably be used to explain anything so I'm not even going to go down that route I don't see the point in going down that route it does it, 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 it makes very little sense what I'm interested in is going through the processes of having experiences which you could then try and repeat and the work out under what circumstances that strange phenomena occurred. And that's why I tend to focus in so much more on meditation and consciousness-based exercises, astral projection, um, dream telepathy, and that sort of thing. Okay? So I'm not a proponent of the law of attraction. I'm not a proponent of the secret.